good Tuesday morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. We have our eyes and our prayers on this storm Zeta that is um, down on the southern coast. Once again, <clears throat> it looks like my beloved Pensacola is going to get a little bit of that storm. Uh, it looks like maybe Atlanta will see a little bit of it. And so we've got our eye on that storm. But the good news is God has his eye on that storm. And so I am just praying for protection over our country today as we are um, as we are looking at this <clears throat> at this storm. Um, let me we're going to finish talking about Psalm 22 today. So turn there in your Bible and I'm going to tell you something that I that something that I don't often do. But I have my NIV Bible here, and then I also have Steve's um, New King James, and I have one of Steve's King James, because there is a particular section in here that is really incredible, and I don't think the NIV does it full justice. So we're going to be looking at that today. Uh, I am sitting in a different spot because one of my neighbors is working on a project and I cannot figure out what they're doing, but uh, there's a generator noise here in the neighborhood. It's really loud down on that end of my house. And so, uh, so I'm here at my kitchen table today. You can see my back porch out there behind me. <clears throat> um, yesterday, I had the privilege of going to Furlough Cheesecake with, um, I think there were 12 of us there, 10 or 12 of us there, and we had the best time. It was so nice. We kind of set up a buffet of cheesecake down the middle of the table, and everybody was sharing, and and we uh, safely, safely sharing, and we had the best time. Um, we want to do that again really soon. For those of you who weren't able to go with us yesterday. Uh, we missed you, but uh, Sally, I just want you to know that evidently everybody was thinking about you. And uh, and so, girl, I think you're gonna get some of that cheesecake. Yeah, Vicki said it's, uh, Victoria said it's good. It is, isn't it pretty? Isn't it pretty outside today? Uh, the leaves are just starting to change. This is a great big plant that sits here on my back porch and it's one of those I've uh, changed the pot. It has been in twice and uh, it's just growing and growing. I think I'll probably bring it inside soon. Okay, Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I, I thank you for the friendship and the fellowship you've allowed us to have. Now, Lord, I pray that you would touch our minds today. Give us revelation, give us clarity so that we would know you better through your word. I pray these things today in Christ's name. Amen. I also had yesterday afternoon the honor of going over and praying with a precious woman that I dearly love, Joyce Schmidt. Um, she is She's at home in her house. Uh, she lives right over close to Donna Stewart, actually. And... Um, uh, Joyce needs our prayers. She she knew who I was, and uh, I just stood and talked to her for a while and prayed with her for a while. And uh, I had the privilege of meeting her sisters. There were three sisters there yesterday, and, and Joyce, and she's the oldest sister. And watching how they loved on their sister and how precious they were for me, it was... Um, it was very touching, very touching. So keep Joyce in your prayers. I'll be going back and visiting her again soon. And uh, just keep Joyce Schmidt in your prayers. She is not a member of our church because she is very happy in the church that she belongs to and has belonged to for a long time. And uh, But uh, she's been a part of our Bible study for years and years and years. And so I uh, really love her. Uh, somebody said, uh, okay, uh, somebody said, what were the lines like yesterday? Yes, I went and voted. Hey, Wanda, good to see you this morning. I went and voted yesterday. Steve and I went and voted yesterday, and we went out to Akakik to the volunteer fire department, and 
it, there was a line, but it moved very quickly. I heard that Bach Road uh, was super, super abundantly busy yesterday. Uh, but out at Akakik Volunteer Fire Department, um, uh, there was a long line, but it, a lot of that was because we were, you know, distance apart from each other, but uh, it moved very quickly. I got in there and got to boat, and um, uh, let's see, where's my phone? Oh, here it is. I got my sticker. I got my sticker. I voted. All right, Psalm 22. Yesterday, we got to, where is Psalm 22, guys? My Bible, my precious Bible. Oh, there it is. No, Psalm 22. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Ugh. All right, Psalm 22. And yesterday, we got to verse, we got through verse 11. So, we're going to start at 12 today. And if you remember, we talked yesterday. Uh, I'm going to do a real quick yesterday's program um yesterday we talked about how this was a depiction of david going through <clears throat> a severe crisis a really severe crisis and we don't know what it was but it was it was uh horrific whatever it was but it's also the words that jesus chose to quote as he was on the cross so when you when you look at these words, it has it has three levels of meaning. It is David talking about a crisis. It is Jesus as he's been crucified, and it also, of course, applies to our lives and how things in our lives happen and how we handle things in our lives. And so it says, uh, let's look down. At 12. No, I'm going to go back up to 9 because uh, we kind of need to catch up. Yet you brought me out of the womb. So, th David has been talking about this horrific situation in his life. But he's then he's remembering, but you, you met, you, you, I remember you. You were there with me when I was in the womb. You made me trust you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there's no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of passion encircle me. This indicates brutal strength. Just brutal strength, not, not somebody just coming out at us, you know, with like, oh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really coming after you with this ribbon. But no, it's David saying, I, I, and Jesus saying, many bulls have surrounded me and, and they're longing to tear me apart. So these are strong people. These are powerful people. These are physically strong, but also authority strong people, roaring lions, tearing their prey, opening their mouths wide against me. Isn't that a visual of, you know, David, of course, knew what it was like to, to see a lion and Jesus, who uh, himself was the lion of Judah. Uh, they knew what it was, these, these strong, powerful, and for them to open their mouths, to open their mouths wide against me. So it's not just somebody talking behind their hand. This is, uh, this is wildly slanderous, wildly coming after him, very aggressive. And it says, I am poured out like water, which means I am completely empty. I am completely empty. If you, if you have a pitcher of water and, or juice or tea or anything, and you pour it out of the pitcher, and then you let the pitcher just sit upside down for a while, it's completely empty. And that's what he's saying. My strength is pot, is dried up like a pot shirt in my mouth, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. He's so thirsty. He's just he's in such a terrible physical situation. He, he's such in a, a spiritual, mental, everything about him is just drained so that he feels, you know, when you are dehydrated, Steve's grandmother and his mother got severely dehydrated. Um, 
you know, a couple of times in their lives. And in Mildred's case, this is making me so thirsty. In Mildred's case and in her mother's case, they entered them in the hospital and they called the family in. And they said, this is, this is so bad. You know, they, they are... They are dying. Their organs are shutting down. And then they got in the hospital, and the doctors gave them, started giving them an IV and really pumping them full of fluid. And as a matter of fact, the doctor told Steve that what he did to Mildred was he, he plumped her up a little bit. And then they were okay. They were so much better. When we are spiritually dehydrated, when we are emotionally dehydrated, <clears throat> When we are out of our mind with thirst, and yet we don't go to the source where we need, where we need to be hydrated. He says, I'm, I'm just so thirsty that I have become like the dust of death, which is a reference to Genesis 3.19. Dogs have surrounded me. Just dogs. Well, this could have been talking about actual dogs waiting for David or Jesus to die, but it's probably talking about these men who are just dogs. It says, A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Now, maybe David really was, maybe he really did have his his body pierced for some reason. Maybe maybe they've stabbed him. Or maybe he is just purely being prophetic here, talking about Jesus having his hands and his feet pierced. It says they cast, oh, I can count all my bones. Now, let me just tell you something about that. I've always thought that meant, you know, when somebody is super, super thin and they say, man, you can just count their bones. Mm -mm. This means bones not broken. It's like Jesus would be doing an inventory. Okay, my arms are not broken. That is also prophetic out of Isaiah that said he would not have broken bones. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Here again, it's referring to both of these men. We know that the, that the people took the garments that Jesus had been wearing and they were, they were gambling for them. They were betting for them. They were purchasing them. And then it's also probably happened in David's life where people were taking his clothes and literally stealing his clothes and taking them and casting lots for them and dividing them. Then this is where the NIV leaves out a line. Wait, and let me look over here at the New King James 22. Because in, in the NIV, it leaves a very important line out. It says, wait a minute, but you, O Lord, and that, that's in the NIV, you, O Lord, do not be far from me. Oh, my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. And so this, it does say that in the NIV, but look how it says, here's what he's asking for. This is Jesus saying to God, but it's also David saying to God, um, but you, O Lord, do not be far from me. Oh, strengthen, strengthen be my strength, hasten to help me, deliver me from the sword, my precious life, save me, deliver me, be not far from me, come quickly to help me, rescue me. But then look at the line that the NIV leaves out, and I don't know why. It says, you have answered me. 21b says, you have answered me. Now, it says in the NIV, save me from the horns of the wild oxen, but it does not say, you have saved me, which is critical here. You have saved me. You have answered me. You've answered me. And what was the question that he's answered? The question that he has said is, 
uh, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me deliver my life, my precious life. I love that it says my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me. And it leaves out that beautiful one sentence. You have answered me. So I looked it up in the King James. Uh, King James 22. 22, 22. It doesn't say it. Oh, yeah, it does. It says, for you have heard me from the horns of the unicorns. You have heard me. You have come to me. You have answered me. You have heard me. How many times have we heard David cry out? How many times have we cried out, God, have you forsaken me? My God, my God, do you hear me? My God, my God, I feel like I'm out here on my own. My God, my God, I feel like I'm in this situation by myself. Oh, my God, my God. And then it says in 21, one little line that changes everything you have answered me. Why doesn't the NIV say that? Oh, Christian Standard has it. All right. Well, you have saved me. You have saved me. And because of that, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. Now, in Hebrews 2, 12, Jesus quotes that also. And I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. You who fear the Lord, praise him. Praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. For he has not hidden his face from him. And look again uh, at the New King James. <clears throat> um, For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. That's so much better than what NIV says. He's not, let me see what, he's not despised. Yeah, that's what it says in the King James. It says, for he has not, Grandma, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him, but when he cried to him, he heard. We started out with him saying, my God, my God, why have you turned your face? Why have you forsaken me? But now it's saying he has not despised nor abhorred or hated the affliction of the afflicted. He's not despised us when, when we are in our affliction. In the midst of our affliction, in the midst of Jesus hanging on that cross, he has not despised him. He has not left him it says nor has he hidden his face from him but when he cried to him he heard and when you look at that nor has he hidden his face from him all capital h's so it's talking about god talking about jesus jesus and god are capital h always capital h david <clears throat> is not it says for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted nor has he hidden his face from him but when he cried to him he heard when he cried to him he heard absolutely david is talking about himself i'm sure but he's also being prophetic here because it says when he heard him cry out, he heard. Jesus heard, capital H. He heard. When we cry out, he hears. But when Jesus is on that cross, he heard. God heard. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. 
all the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rule he. He rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. Now, this is uh, a little age himself. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and they will declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has done this. I want us for just a minute to just look at this as purely prophetic. Purely prophetic. And think of Jesus hanging there on that cross. It says that his, we think, wait a minute. I skipped where it says my heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. That is because that position of being crucified is so it's so awkward. And then when they pierced his side with that spear, many theologians think at that time it would have been uh, they pierced his heart. They pierced his heart. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted within me. It also could be in reference to his love just pouring out. You know, Sometimes when we, we see a, a little baby or, or we see someone we love dearly and you say, oh, my heart just melted. What if Jesus is saying that about us? I looked into the future and I saw all of you and my heart just melted with love. And then what if Jesus is standing there saying, before those who fear you will I fulfill my vows. When Jesus went to the cross that day, he fulfilled his vows. He fulfilled his vows, his promise. When Jesus went to that cross that day, he made it possible that the poor will eat and be satisfied. The poor will eat and be satisfied. How many of you have been in poor spirit? How many of you have just been longing to be satisfied. He says, because I am fulfilling my vows. Those of you who are poor, you're going to be satisfied. Those of you who seek me, you're going to find me. You're going to find me and you're going to praise me. May your hearts live forever. May your hearts live forever. This physical body will not live forever. Right? This physical body will not live for yet forever. Yesterday when I went to see my sweet friend Joyce, and I was I was standing there next to her, and her body has become very frail. But she knew me, and she was praising God, and she responded as soon as I started praying. Her whole demeanor changed. You see, her heart will live forever because she's going to live in eternity with Jesus Christ. And yes, she is going through a crisis right now. But I cannot imagine Joyce Schmidt ever saying, God, you've forsaken me. No. She knows you have answered my prayer. You have answered me. I am your child. This is what she's lived her whole life for, to be able to get ready to enter into his presence, into his kingdom you have answered me. You've heard me. And therefore, I'm going to cry out. It says, they, posterity will serve him, so generations will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. David's not talking about himself now. He's talking about God. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Future generations will know about him. So this was... Way back over 2,000 years ago is when Jesus was crucified. 
and years and years and generations and generations before that is when David wrote this. But when David wrote this, he knew this doesn't stop with me talking about Jesus. This doesn't stop when Jesus dies on the cross. Generations and generations and generations will know him. They will talk about him. They will trust him. They will believe in him. Sometime in the far distant future, Dion gets will know Jesus Christ. And her daughter, Jana, will know Jesus Christ. And her grandson, Joey, will know Jesus Christ. He's saying future generations. This is for a people not yet born. For a people not yet born. People who, who haven't even been thought of yet. Dion's mother and dad and all of her, like, she's got like 50 brothers and sisters. And, and none of them were even thought of at that time. But Jesus knew them and he knew their name. He knew their name. He knew their lives. He knew their future. He knew their history. He knew their present. The poor will be satisfied. They will eat and be satisfied. The poor, the rich, will feast and worship. And all those who go down to the dust will kneel before him. That means, will we all go down and kneel and be part of the dust? Yeah, if Jesus doesn't come before, until before we die. We'll go down, be back part of the dust. These bodies will die. That is it a Celine Dion song? My heart will go on. My heart will go on. My spiritual, my spiritual person <clears throat> will go on because he fulfilled his vows. He fulfilled his promise on that day. It's funny that I mentioned Dion because she says, I'm at Walter Reed with my sister. I'm at Walter Reed with my sister. I don't know what that's about, but let's just pray and believe that Dion's sister is healed, is healed, is delivered. It's amazing to me because I don't know how they decided what verse came next because they're not in chronicle, chronological order. We know that. We know that. They would have... Some would have written, been written over David's lifetime, and the ones that would have been written by Solomon would have been after David died. The ones written by Asaph would have been during his time, or Ethan would have been during his time. But the next psalm after this, after this heart-wrenching psalm that Jesus himself quoted as he was on the cross, that Jesus himself spoke as he was dying on the cross. Jesus himself spoke of Psalm 22, and it's followed by Psalm 23. When you read Psalm 23, you're encouraged. When you read Psalm 23, you instantly know the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. A again, I don't know how they decided. I should find that out, but I don't know how they decided. Okay, we're going to put Psalm 21, and then we're going, which is uh, a victory prayer. Uh, but then it's Psalm 22, which is uh, sung to the song uh, to the tune of the doe of the morning. It's it's. You know, it's just such a heart-wrenching psalm. But then you go into Psalm 23, the 23rd psalm. The 23rd psalm, which everybody reads when they're, when they're worried or they're upset. Because Psalm 23 says, surely. I, not, not, well, surely, but it's like, surely. For sure. For sure. Without a doubt. Goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord. 
Isn't that amazing? That Psalm 22, which I have kind of put off speaking over because it's it's such a cry. It's such a cry that it's it's difficult for me to even read this or even study this without without being teary eyed, knowing what Christ was going through as he was calling this out. As he was calling this out. As he's being pierced, as he's being uh, uh, the spear going into his side, as he's so thirsty, as there's blood all over him because he's been beaten so badly, it says he didn't even look like a man anymore. But it ends with, you know what? Everybody's going to know about this. This is how this is how I saved the world. You talk about Superman saved the world saves the world. This is when Jesus saved the world. Literally saved the world. Because up until this point, it was up to us to offer up sacrifices. And then Jesus came in and absolutely gave his life so that we could be saved so that we could be healed, so that we could be delivered. And because of that, all dominion belongs to the Lord. He rules over all the nations. We will all kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, I like that one. Even those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will serve him and will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his goodness to a people yet unborn. For he has done it. He has done it. So there's two powerful sentences in there that I think I'm just going to repeat and repeat and repeat. One's, one is, which is not in my, or it wasn't until I wrote it in there. It says, um, you have answered me. Hmm. I've cried out and you've answered me. And the other one is, he has done it. He has done it. Is that what the New King James says? Yep, for he has done this. The New King James says, for he has done this. And this is in italics. And in the King James, it says that he hath done this. He's done it. He's done it. I want you to... I want you to, you know, look at the screen as though you're looking to all of our friends who are watching and say, he's done it. He has answered me. For he has answered. And he's done it. He's done it. He's answered us. And he's done this. He's done it. We're not even sure what the question is. I'm not even sure what the question is for your life. But I can tell you this, he's done it. He's answered. He's answered us, and he's done it. Oh, that that would be a prophetic message over this coronavirus. He's answered us, and he's done it. He's answered us, and he's done it. For our families who are unsaved, oh, that he's done it. He's answered, and he's done it. Oh, for the crisis situations that are going on in all of our lives. Oh, he's answered us and he's done it. He's answered us and he's done it. And and I'm not going to think small. I'm, I'm not going to think small. I'm going to think big. I'm going to think huge. For he's answered us. And he's done it. He's done this. He's done this. He's done it. He died on the cross for our sins. He's done that. He's done it. He's made us savable. He's done it. He's allowed this to go to future generations. He's done it. He has done it. He's done it. 
what can wash away my sins? He's done it. He's done it. Wow. That's powerful. I'm so glad that I just happened to check these other Bibles. I'm just so glad that I was able to find that one sentence that NIV left out. He's done it. He's answered our prayers. And then all of these Bibles that I've looked at say, yeah, he's done it. For he's done this. He's done it. Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for me personally that you've illuminated this scripture in a new way, in a different way. And yes, I thank you that you died for our sins. I thank you that you allowed yourself to be beat, that you allowed yourself to be pierced, that you allowed yourself to be crucified, that you allowed yourself to be plunged in the side with a spear that maybe ruptured your heart, but it was your earthly heart. Because Lord, I thank you that you rose again. And because you've, rose, you've risen again, we can say, he has risen. He has done it. He's done this. I thank you, God, for that assurance. I thank you for that promise today. I thank you for that reminder today. I, I thank you that you fulfilled your vows so that we are here. I thank you, Lord, that on this day in October, when the world is in turmoil over a virus, when the nation is in turmoil over an election, when we as people are coming together and there's controversy everywhere over everything, everybody is so easily offended. I thank you, Lord, that you've taken the enemy's number one tool, which is offense. Offense. And you've reminded us today, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a child of God. I've answered you. And I've done it. Wait a minute. Father, we're going to put our hysteria and our chaos on pause. And we're going to remind ourselves, you've done it. You've answered our prayer. You've come against addictions in our families. You've come against unbelief in our families and in our lives. You've come against heartbreak. You've come against grief. And Lord, even in the midst of our affliction, you have not turned your face from us. But Lord, you're there. And you've answered our prayer and you've done it. I thank you, Father, in Christ's name. Amen. 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 It is finished, Jerry. It is finished. He's done it. He's done this. Wow. Wow. I'm just going to sit here in my kitchen at my kitchen table for a little while and say, wow. Victoria, he's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Amen. God bless you, and he is. You know I love you. One of the things that Joyce's sisters said to me yesterday was, now, I'm not their pastor's wife. I'm not their first lady. And I met them yesterday for the first time. But they said they felt like they knew me because Joyce loved me so much. I cannot describe to you how that felt to my heart. I cannot. The fact that you and I love each other through just this time of Bible study, the fact that Pamela Knight and Sally Mauser are good, good friends, that they are prayer partners with one another, and they've never seen each other. Uh, I don't think they've ever even FaceTimed each other, but they love each other. And they're very protective of each other. 
I love it. I love that God has done this in our lives. I love you so much. I'm praying for you. I'm believing with you. I've just had you on my mind and on my heart. But more than that, think about when Jesus was being crucified. You were on his mind. And you were in his heart. I love you so much. Tomorrow is Wednesday. I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. God bless you. Please remember to pray for Joy Schmidt and for her sisters. God bless you.